get over. I got to go back to that woman. Oh. Oh, yeah. We were talking about, so we were talking about Miss Massey. Sonya Massey. Okay, yeah. then we'll come to common. Okay. So here goes Massey. So you are, I'm sure you all know the story. We're not showing the video because I'm a believer that disgusting. It's, it's disgusting. And it's, and I don't want us to become so neutralized and we get so accustomed to seeing black pain. Um, and, I, and I'm just a big proponent of us protecting our mental. And so just be mindful of that. Like when you're watching stuff like cops killing and shooting unarmed black people, like protect your, your energy, protect your space. But we know that story. And um, there is a GoFundMe up for her, for her kids because she did have two kids. Mm -hmm. And um, I think she also had a son. And this is it. why. Yeah. And she this had, is, also had an older son. And, and older this son. is why it's important to listen to the undertones of these politicians when they're saying, yes. Come on, let's talk about it since we we since we're in the arena. Yeah. I heard motherfucking Trump say earlier, and we posted this early in the year, they that they are going to be fighting immunity. to give police officers immunity, immunity for doing their job. For doing their job. A cracker! Right. Went in there and did his job. Overdid his job. Overdid his job. So in other words, in this case of a Sonya Massey or anybody that comes after her, you wouldn't, your family would not be able to prosecute those cops. Correct. Your family would not get any type of retribution. There would, there would be no civil case. Right. None of that would happen. And y'all sitting over here still talking about, bitch, you worried about Kamala Harris as a woman? And what's interesting to me, and I, and I said this the other day on my live, what's happening in Palestine is, is atrocious. It's egregious. It's all of the things, right? But some, I'm hearing some people say. Just say some people. Please. I said some. God, where, please. Where, where you think I'm going? <laughs> Girl, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I am not there yet. Some people, when I, I when, when, when I say some people, I'm talking about Generation uh, Z, Gen Z. Some I'm hearing and just looking on social media, it feels like some are saying, well, I need them to make a ceasefire when, before, before Biden stepped down. There were a lot of Gen Z Gen Zers saying, Gen Zers were saying, well, I need him to call for a ceasefire first, or he's not getting my vote. You think you're punishing him because you don't give him your vote? You're punishing yourself. Right. It's like you're gonna cut your nose off to spite your own face. Like that makes no sense. And then the other thing I want to say, and I say this with the utmost sensitivity, with the utmost sensitivity. That stuff that's been going over, that's going on over there in Palestine, girl, that should have been happening since BC before Christ. And I'm not saying that it shouldn't be that it shouldn't stop, but girl, it's been going on. So we gonna so we're not gonna take care of what's happening in our own backyard, because if we don't take care of this, we can be Palestine part two. Correct. And here's the thing: let's talk. We really will be letting these cops shoot you niggas. And this is what. And let's talk about it. He 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 keeps trying to talk about how he's so far away from Project 2025, but let's play that audio clip. Please. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Let's play that audio clip Where is it? Um, for the Christians. Craig, you up here. You can <laughs> I got to find it, girl. All right, y'all ready? Get your listening ears on. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm not Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good. You're not going to have to vote. Did you say he's not Christian? You, uh, he said, yeah. I'm not Christian. He said, I'm not Christian. You beautiful Christians, get out and vote. I'm going to fix it in four years. You only have to vote one more time. You won't have to vote again. And Project 2025 outlines a dictatorship for the next person to come in as a sovereign, as right. a dictator. He said, you won't have to vote again. Just four more years, you won't have to vote again. Because he plans to fix it so that there is no more voting. He would be the last president until his death. Which and can't then come there, fast and enough. Then, there's, then there's the after. It's the same thing happened with Castro, because the Castro is still running Cuba over there. You better know it. Fidel ran it. Fidel lived to be a, a million years old. 
and then his brother running it. Like this what the regime. fuck? Are y'all are y'all crazy? And you, speaking of crazy, didn't Tina Campbell vote for this nigga the first time? Mary, Mary. It was the god. She her. can't choose. Husbands. It definitely was the god in her. She she can't choose husbands or presidents. Bitch, Teddy, Teddy. And girl, you thought you were voting for his Christian values? His Christian Let's Can we play that again? Please. That he, motherfucker he said he, he ain't like, no Christian. Put your listening ears back on. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm not Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good. You're not going to have to vote. We'll have it fixed so good. You won't have to get out and vote. That's Project 2025. This is what if you go and you read the parameters in Project 2025, it outlines about uh, about a dictatorship. All of the tenants. Joy Ann Reed on the readout. We we might as well jump to her next, uh, Mo. Joy Ann okay. Reed is going to do um, a whole breakdown of Project 2025. I, I may have missed it. It may have been yesterday, but I'm sure you can look it up. But just look at her. She's going to break down um, Project 2025. But Joy Ann Reed said this. And when I tell you this couldn't be more appropriate, yeah, just put the picture up. Okay. And then I got the audio over here. Right. But the thing is, here's the thing. Because they keep saying DEI is didn't earn it. But DEI really stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I've explained it before, but I'll explain it again because we may have some new people here and people who just may not know what it is. It really is leveling the playing field. And it's not just for people of color. It's also for women. And that could be white women as well. It's about making opportunities, making room for people who at the table who otherwise would not get an opportunity so it could be women it could be people of color it could be anything right anything other than white men so they want to call it didn't earn it well here's what joy ann reed said about dei listen closely makes this so ugly is that it reveals a truth that is clearly broadly held within republican circles that white men, by definition, when they have a job, earned it and deserve it. And anybody but a white man is a DEI hire, meaning it was handed to them without them deserving it or without them earning it. George W. Bush became president because his father was president. Um, John F. Kennedy, in many ways, his political rise was because his father paid for it. Paid for a film to be made about his service in World War II to make him more popular. Donald Trump became president because he was on The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. This is some no, tea, Joy. This is tea. <laughs> but, but the reality is, is that in order for if, if Vice President Kamala Harris becomes president, it will be she will become president because she became she was a DA who then got elected to be the Attorney General yes. in a the largest state in the country, which could be its own country, uh, and where that was not done because the country the, the state of California is overwhelmingly black. It's only about six percent black. So she was elected by the entire broad spectrum, one of the most diverse states in the country, as Attorney General, and then got elected to the United States Senate. Meaning that she couldn't possibly be handed the jobs that she had because she had to earn not a few votes, but millions of votes. She didn't get elected senator in Wyoming where there are more cows than human beings. And so by definition, she's earned every position. But to have even women come forward and try to make salacious accusations about her and essentially undermine her and all of the voters who supported her. Yeah. She was selected pre uh, vice president as one of the most qualified people to ever take that office, much more so than Dan Quayle. I don't even remember what he did to become vice president. So the reality is they are revealing, not just to us on this panel, but to every suburban voter mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. to every woman who's ever worked at a job where they felt passed over for a position that a man received or got the job and then had a question, and I'm just talking about black women, and talk about women in general. I'm talking about anyone who has ever felt slighted. You can talk about working class people who, who they're based on class, they're told that they don't deserve to be there. Every person has a story about that moment when you were told you. There you have it. 
And it, you know, it's, I really, really implore you guys to really get out there and understand Kamala Harris's, uh, her platform and what she's done. Cause there's a lot of misinformation out there. There really, really, really is. And I've been doing a lot of digging and, and, and researching as well. Um, there was a call that black women spearheaded. There were over 44,000 black women on this call. Now, from what I know that Zoom, you only can get like a thousand people on a Zoom call. Well, these black women got in touch with the CEO of Zoom and said, listen, we're gonna need a little, little bit more than that. They had over 44,000 black women on this call. Um, some women were famous, some were not. And in 30 minutes, they raised $1.5 million for Kamala Harris's campaign. Then that, 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 that kind of caused the domino effect. Then there was a call with black men and they raised, I think, 1.3 million. Of course, these numbers are from like a week or so ago, so the numbers have now expanded since then. Then there was a call with 200,000 white women and they raised almost $9 million. million. But black women started this. Black women started this. And then there was a call. I was actually on this call the other day. Don Lemon was there. Um, Emil Wilberkin was on that call. He was one of the organizers. Emil Wil Wilberkin was one of the people who, he was the uh, editor for a Vibe magazine. And he also worked at Essence magazine for a while. Um, we were on that call and we raised money as well. I was trying to get that number. I did, I did make a donation that day. I do plan on making another donation. If you've, if you've never made a donation, this is the time to do it. Whether it's a dollar or $500, whatever it is that you can afford, this is the time to do it. Yeah. And I am so, so proud of what has happened and how we're coming together. And this is how I've always wanted to use social media. But I will say that I've been so disappointed. I have been so disappointed. In the black men? By the small amount. Of black men? And women who have been tearing Kamala Harris down because you are spreading information that you've read, not information that you know for yourself, but things that you've read on the shade room or wherever else the fuck you get your, your, your news. Cause it ain't really news. And a lot of the stuff that she's done. And, and that's the thing on that call that I was on the other day, there were black gay men who have been working with her since she was attorney general in San Francisco. And she's always been for the queer community and black men and black people and, and the recidivism rate, meaning, and I'm not trying to speak over anybody's head, so I'm just gonna explain it. The recidivism rate, meaning the rate at which people go back to jail after being incarcerated and then getting out. She's always trying to bring that number down. So there's all this misinformation out there. Now Elon Musk has been creating AI to a, a artificial intelligence to, to make it sound like she's saying things that she's not saying. They need to make that shit criminal. Yeah. They need to do that now. Yes. Because that shit is becoming a problem. And so, again, I'm, 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 I'm imploring you guys to think critically, think critically, think critically, and not be so quick to jump and tear down another black person. Because there are enough people who don't look like us who are tearing her down. Yeah. We don't need you jumping on board of yeah, that. Yeah, don't do that. that. Yeah, and you know, I, I've 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 seen a lot, and I've been in deep discussion like with, with a lot of my straight friends, mm -hmm. and I just been like, bro, you gotta. This is this is critical. It is, and, you know. And my and my friend was very much so like, well, what have the Democrats ever done for black people? What have? And I was like, well, this. Well, what have the Republicans done for black people? But right now, we're in a very we're in we're in a critical time. Bitch, we standing on a quagmire. Yeah, sinking sand. Yes. <laughs> That's where we are now. Now you're either going to vote or you're not. Because the thing is, it, 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 for the black people who are still on the fence, let me say this. There is, There will never be a candidate that you will believe and agree with 100%. You may love us to the floor, but you don't agree with everything that we say. And the same is going to be true about a political candidate. But the point is this. In the case of a Sandra Massey, and if you have that picture, Mo, you can put it up there. Kamala, Kamala Harris actually called that woman's family. You think Trump would have called that woman's family? No. Trump was. didn't even call that man's family who was killed at his rally until weeks later. And he called because he wanted the uniform bitch that he was wearing at that rally when, when Trump 
got shot, quote unquote, in, in the ear. Now let's play devil's advocate here. Yeah. And I'm only going to play it just a bit. Uh -huh. What do you say to the people out there who are watching this show who would say um, the uh, uh, the Democrats are going to use this uh, as a political campaign? Use what? This this crime that has happened against Sonia. But, but, but it's not even something that they need to use. This is what's happening. And not only that, didn't Trump use that? Didn't Trump use that ear? Right. Thing this for, whole ear. Uh, did you see them fucking white people out there with that motherfucking bandage on their ear? <laughs> bitch, if that ain't if that ain't David Koresh all over again, <laughs> bitch, y'all remember David Koresh down in Waco, Texas? If that ain't a cult, what the fuck y'all walking around with gauze on your ear for? <laughs> bitch, what is wrong with y'all? And I will say this to your to your question: you got to think about who's more rational. And and going back to what I was saying a moment ago, no one, you're not gonna agree with anybody 100 percent Right, correct. But if if Asanya Massey was killed in her home after calling the police because she thought there was an intruder or someone out on her property, if she was shot and killed by the police while Kamala Harris was under was the president over there at sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue, who do you think you're gonna, if you standing outside the White House and you're protesting, who do you think you're going to be able to appeal to, a Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? Who's who's uh, who's clearly stating we're gonna give the police officer immunity? Because I'm telling you now, nigga, we're gonna get our police officers to have immunity for doing their jobs. <laughs> High as lips go. We're gonna get. We have to get our police officers because we're doing their jobs. High as lips go, girl. We gotta give our police officers immunity for doing their jobs. Right, right. We gotta get back out here to give the police officers immunity for doing their jobs. If you think they give a fuck about you, then you can play over there in that. Oh, they home. have to have immunity for the murderous <laughs> crime. You're Anytime you hear a cracker, oh like a, a cracker, uh -huh. like that, say murder and crime, they're not talking about nobody white at all. You can put every dime you got down into your name in your account, bitch, anything that's adjacent to you that they're not talking about nobody white at all. And all I can tell you is, bitch, y'all vote Trump in if you want to. Don't come calling us and emailing us and, and, and asking black people online to set up a GoFundMe for you no. when somebody when a cop snatch you out of your car and beat you up or shoot somebody that you especially love. you hoes who knew you who know y'all some niggas and y'all know y'all got ragged ass niggas you fucking you're fucking with and you done birthed. Don't so call bitch, us. don't don't be sitting over there acting like don't, don't be, do that. Don't, and you fags, don't act like you ain't no faggot no more. You know they're gonna um he's gonna outlaw outlaw porn. So you faggies that are in the park fucking. Oh, yeah, I did hear that. I did hear that. You faggies that are over there on OnlyFans, and it's not just faggies that are on OnlyFans. Let me be clear. But you children that are doing all that porn and stuff, you think Project Pro Project 2025 got something for y'all, too? Got something for you. Yeah, they get, it's going to be illegal. It really will. It will be illegal. So you can play if you want to. Baby, God God delivered me at the, hey, at the right time. God deliver me in the right time. Cause he's an on yeah, time. He's an on time, God. Yes, he is. Whoa. Oh, on time, time God. God. Yes, yes, he is. Come on, you know what he won't lose. Hey, I say, he may, may not, not come where you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Let me tell you, he's, he's an, an on time, time God. God. Yes, he is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Won't he do it? Yes, he yes, will. He Won't will. he do it? All yes, the time. he will. Won't he do it? And all, all the time. time. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Hey, yes, he will. I shut a boat. I've been delivered. Now, I may still catch a check. But I've been delivered. <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, ain't he nothing right. wrong with that. Hey, he be, 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 uh, shut him up. <laughs> Hey, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. Baby, I have been delivered because I want y'all to understand this here. Because, see, let me tell y'all something. Uh -huh. That was a message. That was a message that was sent from the Lord. What was, what was that? Ah. that was a message. It was sent from the, from the Lord. Hey, I want be a shunama. Glory to God. Hey, but I thank God. Honda BBB, I shout. God, look on right now. In the name of Jesus, healing hands. Touch and deliver. 